This guy, I think you all understand and know, he's a good friend, of course, and a business partner, and one of my favorite people on the, on the planet. Let's bring in Sam. Hi, Sammy. Hi there, Kurt. How are you, buddy? Good to Thank be you with you this morning. What's it's that? Good to be with, it's good to be with you this morning. Yeah, you know, surprise. I'm glad you're here, brother. <laughs> I thank you so much for joining me this morning. I'm excited. It is 15 years for the San Via brand, and I got to say, what an awesome 15 years. And I just want to thank everybody out there for all of their continued support, for their support in the past and continued support. Uh, thank you, Kurt. I want to get on with the class, guys. So who's joining me today? Shannon. Daytona Beach, Lynn Miles, New Jersey, Roller Girl, Las Vegas. What's up? I love you, man. You and your fashion weeks, you're killing it. Uh, Shannon Big Bidgood, saw you guys at Premier Orlando. I'm in cosmetology school right now. Total fangirl moment. Thank for all you do. Shannon, listen, when you see me at shows, you make sure you come up and you say hi. Ramazan Khan. Hello, Katie. Help. Okay, Katie. Help. Ramazan. Uh, thank you and your crew for always wanting to help us better our skills and to help us shine. God's child, we're always there for you. Always there. We're going to continue to do that. Keep coming out with you. Lupe, what's up, Lupe? Uh, Raul, glad you are here. Do me a favor, everybody, just write in the chat. How many of you are watching? Is there one of you, two of you? Maybe there's a whole salon watching. And where are you watching from? Today is all about a shag. Shags, as we know, layering hair. If there's anything that we've been doing, matter of fact, I was reading an article uh, from the UK, from out of London, that was talking about the headline was the haircut is back. And I certainly believe the haircut is back. And that's because I think a lot of your guests, your clients during that period of just not doing anything, let's say they were just sitting at home, they've all grown their hair out. And as we know, we're back and it's big, back and strong. Oh, I've got Alberta, Canada. Oh, Canada. I love you, my friends. I hope to see you in Tiffany in Toronto in, uh, what is it? Coming up, gosh, I forgot the date. But anyway, check it out. The Fusion Show, it's coming out. Make sure those of you in Canada attend that. Texas is on. India, Raul, thank you so much from India for being on board. Pakistan is on board. That's just awesome to see so many people that desire to learn. That's what this brand is about. An investment in education, it continues to be an investment in your future. So let's talk about shags. As we know, been happening for a while. You've got the mixie, the bixie, the pixie, the mullet, the, the shaglet, the all of a sudden an octopus has shown up. Pretty soon you're going to have an artichoke shown up. It's not important that you know, I think it's important you know the names and how to do these, but it's not so important whether you like them or not. I think it's important to understand. And I thank you for being here because it shows that you can, you, you, are concerned about making sure what the client, the guest that sits in your chair, what their needs and expectations are. So I don't know if you about you, what's up, South Dakota? I don't know about you, but if someone sits in the chair and says, hey, I want that octopus cut, Sam, I want to know what it is. I don't want to have to start Googling it or ask, what is that? So what we're going to talk about today is a shag. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, it's I we did this shag back in uh, a photo shoot in our lived in precision shoot and it's called uh, the Christie shag. We name our cuts after what's up, Stephen Molito. <laughs> great to see you, brother. But it's great to the that we de do these shoots. It's just a version of shags. There's so many versions out there that you know and you see. So what tools am I going to be working with today? First of all, let's talk about that. So let's talk about the tools that I'm going to work to execute this shag. You're going to see me pick up a large tooth comb. I find now that I'm layering hair and because I'm compressing, taking larger sections or when I'm working with a, 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 a long haircut, a long haired layered haircut, I'll pick a larger comb. And it's something that I never thought I would do uh, at the moment. I'm always now saying never say never. It's just making it more comfortable for me to work with longer hair and bigger sections. And we'll talk about that. And then obviously I have a regular cutting comb, the fine and the wide teeth, but these are the tools that I'm going to be working with. You're going to see me work with a seven inch dry cutting shear. Now you can use this on wet or dry hair. I love using this when I'm layering hair and I'm taking larger sections, wet or dry. It is made for dry cutting, but I, you could certainly use it on wet. You use it just on dry. Your edges are going to last a lot longer. You're going to see me pick up a small shear and I want you to look at the handle of that shear compared to the handle of the seven dry inch. This is a forward set handle. This is a classic offset handle. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to please all the tribes that are out there that say, Sam, I cannot get used to your forward handle. Well, now we have it in classic. You're going to see me use a shorter blade. And the reason I'm going to use a shorter blade is because I'm going to be doing a fringe. 
I don't go to a long blade. So just like a butcher, they have different types of knives, a bread knife, a, bu a butter knife, a steak knife, a butcher knife, a knife, a particular knife to cut the sliced fish. So do we have different types of tools to execute one entire haircut? Look how much what I'm using. Uh, next, this is the 14 tooth cutter. This is becoming very, very popular this year here that you see. It's becoming very popular because I've had a couple people come up to the show say, Sam, that 14 tooth cutter has saved my life. I go, what do you mean it saved your life? They go, well, when I layer hair, it really eliminates any of the lines that I happen to see. So this is great for those blondes that you happen to layer and you want to get those lines out, even though I know you're a great hair cutter. Sometimes it's just visual. So this is great in terms of anything that you want to bulk, weight, whatever you happen to call it, or those lines that you happen to see, this will eliminate that. But it also gives you that uh, point cutting effect. And I've seen Jesse Linares, one of our art team members, he's used this year for the entire haircut. You're also going to see me pick up the Invis Invisiblend. This is the Invisiblend. It looks a lot like the uh, reversible blender, but it's not. This year is amazing because it really is uh, more of the one that just creates invisible layers when you want to go in a texture. Takes out a little bit uh, less than what this might take out. So be aware of that in terms of the texture shears. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is all of the tools this month are 25% of all the products. And that includes our mannequins and that includes our cutting stools also. So now let's get into the haircut. Okay. I'm going to draw this out for you. I'm going to section this out first so you get to see it step by step. And what I want to do is go through and cut this in a way where it's simple. I, I think really simplicity is today's brilliance. So really, the idea of keeping things things so simple is, is really important to me. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to section. Now, let's talk about layers. I've discovered when I want to go in and I'm going to layer hair, I'm going to work off a middle part. And the reason I'm working off a middle part is because it keeps the layers, the graduation, even on top. Layers equals graduation. Graduation equals layers. Uh, a lot of people refer to things a lot different. I just want to clarify that in terms of the language. But my layers, you know, they, they come out even. Have you ever asked a client, where do you part your hair before I cut it? Tell me where you part it, on the side. I used to put it directly on the side that they would part it. Then I would go and layer the hair. After I layered it, what I discovered is they'd say, well, why is this side shorter than the opposite side? I would explain to them it's because we're parting on the side. You have more hair on one side than you do the other. And they just didn't get it. So what I've discovered lately is let's work off of a middle part. It's just going to make it easier for you. Sam, yes. What if they part on the side? After you're going to see me cut a fringe. If that is exactly what I would do, whether it's a fringe or whether it's on the side, I address that after I put in my layers. What I want to do is I'll take a triangle section or where they part it and take a triangle section. I'll cut that to move left to right or right to left. Or I'll take that triangle section, depending on how wide I want to make that, I'll come back in and cut my fringe. So I'm going to isolate a triangle section right off the bat. Why? Because I know today I'm going to show you a really cool way to cut a nice square rounded fringe without it dropping off longer on one side and continuing to recut. So stay with me. At the end, hopefully, Kurt's going to have a surprise for you at the end that he's going to share with you. Now, I'm going to take this all the way. Look where I'm at. I'm going to take this all the way to not to that point of that recession. I'm going to make this fringe sit all the way square to this point, right where I'm at, right there. Okay. Now, fringes. Fringes, I love to cut them dry. But you'll see do something possibly a little bit different with this one. But the idea is with fringes, it's really a fringe can awaken a shape. I want you to remember that phrase. A fringe awakens a shape. Simply taking one length hair and cutting a fringe on it really will awaken a shape. So really consider and use that phrase when you're consulting or discussing fringes. Fringes complement face shapes. Really research and understand how fringes affect face shapes. What fringes are best for what face shapes. Now look where I'm at. I'm going to give you a front view of this. Take a look at how I've got that triangle. Look how far down I am on both sides. And that's because I'm going to cut this rather short right there at that point. So now I'm going to take all of this fringe and I'm going to isolate this. Okay. And you'll see my isolation. I have this back to a far point there. So it goes back at a far point. So how far back do you take a fringe, Sam? I think it depends upon what your end result is and what you want to do. Sometimes I'll take a fringe all the way back 
and I'll blow dry it out of natural fit, uh, following position. So I camouflage a receding area where the hair is receding back. That's a great way to camouflage that area. So there's so many things that you can do with a fringe. Now let's go through. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a horseshoe section, ignoring the fact that this is a triangle. So I'm going to take a section knowing why are you pre-sectioning, Sam? Because I'm going to detach each area from itself, from another section. So I've discovered if I pre-section, it makes it a lot easier to maintain consistency and stay in control. I've tried not sectioning before, and I find that my inconsistency and balance is off. So this really helps to keep the balance. Now watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take a, a just a square horizontal curved line wrapping around. I'm going to do this on both sides. Notice what I did was I used the comb and where the comb comes off the head, that's where I'm going to start that. So you can see where it comes off here. That's where I place the comb, the large tooth sectioning that we gave you with the cutting. I place that there. I want you to notice I'm working with a white comb on a dark level of color so that I can see the contrast. If you notice when I showed you the board, the tools of like a cooking show, what I'm working with, you can see what happens is because it was on that black board, those tools really stood out. Get your comb to have contrast. What color, not what level of color are you working with? And then I want you to pick up a comb that is opposite that. So you have a contrast and you can actually see the extension, the extension of the line that you're cutting as I'll be demonstrating. Okay, now I've got my horseshoe section on top. Now watch what I'm going to do. What I want to do now is I want to create a zigzag section. You may be thinking, Sam, this requires time. Uh, actually, the cutting time is cut down. So being merely pre-sectioning, it's inclusive of what I used to do in the whole old, old day. So it's not requiring any more time doing what I'm doing compared to what I used to do. Now, look at, there's that solid line. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the wide teeth of the comb. I'm going to place it perpendicular or vertical to that horizontal curved line. I'm going to take and move it half an inch up, half an inch down, half an inch up, half an inch down. But first, let me comb this back. I grab all that hair. I visualize where that line was. Half up, half down, 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 half up. Now what I do is I slice where that line was, and I've been able to create a zigzag section. What I've discovered is after practicing and practicing this, it works for me a lot quicker. Remember, speed comes with practice with anything that we do. Now, watch what I'm going to do to continue this. All I'm going to do is just comb this hair forward. Okay, now watch me just take the white teeth, and I'm going to take off where I continued, where I left off. Now, I'm just going to comb this. So I've got to pick up some of this hair that's down below. So we'll comb. Look, I gradually pick that up, put it in my hand, and I continue. Half up, half down, half up, half down, half up, half down, half up, half down, half up, half down. While I do that, I'm never losing sight of where that line was. So now, look, at I've been able to create a zigzag section. Once again, my friends, this requires time. If you're learning something, just give me a yes. You are using the blade or main part of the comb and large tooth at end. Why? See how I'm using this? And this is a question that I had from Tiffany. Tiffany, I'm using this. That allows me to section. Okay, so I'll use that to section. So this is a great sectioning tool, slicing tool, or sectioning tool to use this part of the comb. Okay. All right, good. I got a lot of yeses. Tiffany, I hope that answers your question in terms of um, the blade, using blade or main part of the comb and large tooth at end. Why? That's why I'm using it. So it makes it easier for me to get a consistent zigzag using the wide teeth of the comb to zigzag versus the fine, number one. Number two, this tooth here that I mentioned, that is great for section. Okay, let's place this up and away. All right, Lynn, beautiful, beautiful, excellent. Kelly, yes. Okay, here we go. Now I'm going to isolate that. Now what I want to do is I'm going to cut a little fringe. I'm going to create the shag a little bit differently. I'm going to kind of push the edge a little bit. This next step that I'm going to section out, you don't need to do this, but what I want to do is I'm going to create a, a full fringe up to this point. Then I'm going to create another little side kind of bang right here. So it has a bi-level effect to it. This shag is more fringe to a bi-level to a mullet shag kind of effect. Do you need to do this section to get a more of a traditional shag? No, you don't need to do this section that I'm going to do, but I'm going to do this because I want to incorporate that look that I did for you. And you'll see how I'll soften this. This little edge, this little 
uh, rectangle shape we have here. I'll soften this out as I layer it, then come back and blunt it off geometrically on the perimeter edge of that. Now we come over to the opposite side. Okay, opposite side. I'm going to take that same panel. Now, why did you zigzag, Sam? Some of you may be asking, why do you zigzag that section? The reason, I'm going to use the white teeth again. The reason I'm going to zigzag that, notice how I blouse that up so it tells me where it wants to separate on its own. Okay, the reason I did a zigzag is because I want this, this is going to be disconnected from that. So I want this to be edge to be very diffused. I want it to visually looks like, look like it blends, but technically it will not blend. Now, for my blenders out there, what I want you to remember is in today's world, the haircut no longer has to blend. Yes, we were taught it had to blend. We taught them it had to blend. We created these monsters. My haircut doesn't blend, but we started getting into texturizing. The reason we got into texturizing is because people were picking up round brushes. So we moved away from geometric shapes. Never will go away. You're going to see tribes out there that still love them. But the idea is, is keep pace. Stay at the head of the train. So the idea was we moved away and we started texturizing. So if you texturize, then you're really not a blender. Now, disconnection is another kind of uh, area that we moved into in cutting where areas of a haircut are disconnected. A prime visual example of that would be Victoria Beckham. Her haircut was disconnected. The crown was disconnected from the underneath, but it visually didn't look it. It wasn't disconnected hard. It was disconnected very soft and diffused. So when she touched it, it got frothy. So what we discovered was we didn't want to connect the layering because if we connect the layering, it pulls volume down. So that's why we were point cutting, slicing and doing all that. Then we discovered disconnection even works better and combining all those together is great. All right. So let's cut some hair. So here's what we did. I'm going to give you the sectioning right here. What we did was we took a section and it went all the way past that area. As you can see how wide that section was on that triangle. Then from there, what we did was we took a zigzag section and we worked our way around that top. Okay. So we came here from a profile view. It looks like this. I came way down here. Look at this. Look where I'm at. Way down there. Then from there, from here, okay, what we did was we went in and took that zigzag section. So here's how it looks profile. Went where the comb comes off the head, that's where that section started to take place. Okay, and then I worked it around. Okay, now what we have is we took a section here that we're going to create as a little panel, as a little almost, I'm going to call it, please don't take this wrong, like a sideboard bang if you want, or a sideboard kind of piece in front of the air, in front of that. Okay, now we come through here. Okay, that section. So this section was isolated. Okay, so that's all of what we have. This is our sectioning, okay, that we see there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to cut the back area. So let me show you what I'm going to do first, and then I'm going to come back and draw it. So I'm going to take and work with a large comb. See, I'm moving to a large comb with dark hair, and I'm going to work with a 7-inch. Okay, so I want to work with my 7-inch. And the reason I'm working with my seven inches, you're going to find out I'm taking a lot more hair. Now, this is a forward set thumb. It's much more ergonomically. If I just relax my hand and bring it up, the thumb fits right there. There's no tension inside of here. So if you're having any elbows, wrist, carpal or shoulder uh, issues, this is a great shear for you. A forward set handle. Okay. Now, I want to round this out. So see this edge you see here? I'm going to round that out. Okay, I'm going to bring you in closer. Okay, so I'm going to round this edge out. I don't want this square. So the position of my hand, look at the comb. Okay, I'll give you the back so you can really see this. Look at the position of my hand. Okay, this is center. Now look what I'm doing. See how I'm doing that? See how the comb is moving? That's what I'm going to do. What I'm trying to explain to you is I'm not going to hold my hand square like this and square across the back. Why? Because I want this hairline here. I want it to travel less distance to get to the cutting position versus me positioning square and over directing that back. That's what I want to create. So you'll see here. Okay. Now this is a great white way to utilize the hairline to create a little bit more of a rounded effect here. Now look at me combing. Look how I'm taking all of this section at once. No, you're absolutely right. This is not how I was taught. But what I want is I want a nice soft edge. 
So here's the analogy. Please explain to your client, your guest, why you're lifting all this hair at once. It's not because you're in a hurry. It's because of what you discovered. Notice the word discovered. What I discovered, Louise, is we've discovered it's like taking paper in a paper cutter. The more paper we place in the paper cutter, it's not such a straight edge. You want volume. You want movement. You're going to work with a round brush. So we need soft edge here. So what we discovered is long, larger sections give me a softer edge. If this makes sense, say yes. Okay. Now watch. Cutting action. Look how I'm taking the action blade. There's the thumb moving. But watch me take the action blade and I place that on my ring finger. Okay. See that? Now, what I'm going to do is, all I'm going to do is just extend my ring finger. Look at that. See how it's extended? It's not here. It's here. I place that blade. Now, look at the angle of the blade. It's almost straight up and down. This season, I am scanning all of my sections. And rarely this season, let me repeat that, this season, am I cutting blunt and straight across. And the reason being is because we're looking for these layers to have some, an end result in terms of movement, in terms of softness, in terms of lift, in terms of volume. So in order to get that, why cut a blunt straight line, then come back and texturize so much? Okay, now watch what I get. Okay, watch this line now. I'm going to give you more of a profile view. Watch this line. Watch it drop. You can just start to see it now. It's starting to drop diagonal. See that? And that is what I'm looking for, that line. So here's what I'm trying to teach you is I didn't go diagonal back to center back. Pull this forward. Watch this. Pull this forward and cut this line. See that line? I let the hairline create that for me by positioning my hand to the round of the head. If you got it, say I got it. I need a got it on there. I, I need a got it. Okay. Or I need a question. If there's something different. Sam, I have a question. What? If I want to keep this longer, what do I do? Well, let's talk about that. Look at the position of my hand. Do you see how this hair traveled less to the cutting position? So simply shift and move your cutting position. Now look how much longer this hair would be getting had I moved back here. Okay. So big difference, guys, in terms of this. What I want you to understand is utilize the movements, elevation, the way you lift it up and up and down. Utilize the side-to-side -side movement or over direction. How you over direct it's going to create weight and length in the opposite direction. And then your finger angle and finger position. Where's your finger position? It's horizontal cutting, but yet I could change that to the path of my eye, a diagonal right now. So I'm putting more length there. Okay. Think of those positions every time we're cutting hair. That's so important. Okay. Now, here's what I want you to do. Have you learned something? Just put a yes in there. Put a yes. I'll wait for you. What's up, Billy Bob? Good to see you, Bill. How was uh, Japanese Gardens, brother? It looked like it was beautiful. I miss San Francisco, Billy, and I miss you and the team there. Oh, by the way, Bill, let everybody know I'm coming September. Coming for a visit. September 18th, 19th. I'll be in town. I'll keep you posted, Bill. Let everybody know. I want to get together, get every, get the team together for dinner. Okay, yes. Okay, good. So now I'm going to move to the opposite side. So, so far, we're doing really good. All right. Now, watch where we're going to go. Sam, I have a question. What? You didn't cut the length. No. See, I, this season, this season, I continue to think inside out. So, I layer the hair first, and then we come back in, and we'll put our perimeter in and lift the length where we want. Because what's going to happen is, if I cut the length first, I put a lot of bluntness in there. And I'm bringing hair, what was once one length, I'm bringing it down. So, I'm lifting this piece of hair twice. Why not layer? Then come back and adjust. And once again, max minimum effort for maximum impact. Minimum effort for maximum results. I think that's a key today. Simplicity is today's key. Okay, here we go. Opposite side now. All right. Now look at the layering that I created there. And you can see by doing that, this moves from short to long. How cool is that? I don't know if you can see that. But look at, see how it's moving short to long. Kind of give you a little slow spin here, Kurt. And you can just see how that's working short to long. Now let's go to the opposite side. On the opposite side, let's just talk about body position. Okay. Square yourself to the section. But once we're ready to cut, I want you to move left foot forward, right foot back. Give yourself some room to cut. Look at my arm. It's perfectly straight. The more square I stay, the more cramped my hand becomes. Okay. Here we go. Take a slice just right of center. Why? Because that way I have a guide. That way I have a guide. Okay. Now, yes. Who said that? 
Roller girl. That a girl. <laughs> I love you. Yes, you adjust at the end. Adjust details and the details. Let that happen at the end. Embrace the dance. Follow your guides. Follow the system that you're embracing at the moment for this particular shape. And continue. See why I work with a large comb. Look how wide that section is. Okay. And yeah, I in order for me to get a relaxed shape, I need to relax this. So if some of you may be thinking, that's so wide. You're going to put all that in your hand. Relax. That's my texture. Don't tell anybody. That's my texture. <laughs> all right, here we go. Yeah, you know what? I've really rela relaxed my hands. I've relaxed my mind. I am grateful for what I've learned in the past. But the past is where we learn and the future is where we apply it. Okay, look at that piece. There's my guide. Look at my guide. You can see my guide. There's my guide. Okay, so my guide is right there. So all I got to do is position my hand. I'm working with the fine teeth of the comb because I'm layering the hair. I can see that guide. Okay, I can really see it. So now my hand comes up. The comb captures the hair. I fold. I can even see my guide again. And now I extend my ring finger, drop it down. The guide blade sits there. And now look at the angle. I'm going to turn just slightly so you can see the angle. Look how my shear's straight up, not notching. I'm not a diagonal. So Billy Bob, get this, scan every section now. And it's a matter of just practice. And yes, I'll get a nice balanced line, a balanced line moving from right to left, left to right. Watch me come back. And now I move back opposite, but I'm making sure that this line is balanced. Sam, what do you mean? Look, it's got some evenness to it. See that? It's not dropping down or doing anything. So I'm very well aware of the action of the blade, the action, the angle of the blade also in regards to the shears. Now watch again. I'll get short. Look at this. Short to long the way that that is dropping. Now let's come through. Take a look at this. Look at how I've got that. Okay. Look how this is falling. Now I'm going to move this hair out of the way because I want you to see the silhouette of this. All right. So take a look at the silhouette of this. Okay. Look at, see how this comes down. I see this a lot this season. Look at this. Look at the angle. Look at that angle. Look how it's rounding itself out. Now you have a choice. Take the point off, leave it, whatever it is that you want to do. I'm going to come through. I'm going to take it off, but watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to shift to my 14 point cut tooth shear. Why come in and go in and do all that work? I'm just going to shift to the 14 tooth point cutting shear staying with i'm going to stay with the large comb combing with the wide teeth not the fine teeth because i want this hair to spread out more and now watch how i'm just going to come through and i'm just going to release my length but i'm at a diag slightly at a diagonal so i get a really nice soft edge to that and look how I've been able to come through in a very organized fashion rather than a free form fashion trying to cut it. And I've seen, like I said, our team member, Jesse Daenerys, he's done a whole haircut with this. I even used to watch Andrew Carruthers, our wellness ambassador. Don't forget Wednesday, tomorrow night, Andrew Carruthers has the great Tara Abramovich on. I love the project she's working on. It fits with today's conversation at the chair. Make sure you watch that tonight, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. But Andrew at times would just go in, Sam, I'm doing these haircuts with just the texture shear only. I'm like, why, Andrew? He goes, because I love the edge I'm getting and how I'm getting the re end result rather quickly. Okay, now I'm going to give you just a look how that's working. And you can see how I layered that out all on its own. Okay, now watch. This season, I see a lot of natural movement going on. So, Billy Bob, I want you to teach this to the team. I'm going in and I crinkle the hair. Look at my fingers. I come in, scrunching his back, but it's more of a crinkle effect. And now watch just that heat from my hands. Look at the, the movement I'm getting out of that. Look, I'll just continue this movement working down. And I let the heat of my hand and product. Today, look at the wave I just created. You can just see that. Okay. Today, what I'm working with is I'm working with Redkins One United as a cutting motion. Then you'll see me go back in and I'm going to work with Redkins Quick Blowout, which I absolutely love because of the conditioning benefits and the fact that I'm able to go in there and blow, blow dry that ha hair in a short period of time. Okay. Now let's go to the side area now. First, let me sketch this out for you what I did here. I'm going to sketch this out right in the back. Follow the green, follow the uh, black. So what I did was I took a section right down the center. Okay. Now my hand, my hand position was that. 
Sam, could I take this section by section if I wanted to and divide in two sections? Of course you can. So you can divide this in half, take one, take the other half, up, elevate up to a stationary guide. Take, make sure your, your uh, section is on the diagonal because that is going to be the position of your hand. So it does this. So all of this whole hair came up to that position, and then I reversed it. And I came back the opposite direction. I'm aware of what's my hand position. Okay, that was step one. So now get a screenshot of that, guys, right there. I'll let you get a screenshot of that. I'll take myself out of the way. So body positioning and hand position is really important in that back area. It's so important you understand the why behind that hand position. It's because I wanted it short to long behind the ear to center back. I didn't want to take a diagonal section back and over direct everything forward, cut the line, and then come back and layer. It's actually saving me some time going in and doing it this way. All right, let's go to side area. Side area, exact same thing. Now, the side area has lifted up. So this is going to give me shorter. Why? There's less hair in the side area than there is in the back area. So we have to be aware of that. So now watch me go to that side area. I'm going to stay with my 7-inch dry. Okay. Now I'm going to slice. Now watch what I'm going to do. See, I took a slice just by the ear. That's going to act as my guide. Yes, it's going to be shorter. Okay, remember, that's the, the goal, the visual that I want at the end. So watch, I'll bring this up. Okay, there's my guide. Notice how I never flush out to my guide. I can see it. So that gives me this scanning edge here. So I get the scanning edge that I'm created to match that. See how I'm able to do that? So my point that I'm trying to make here is don't flush your hand all the way into the guide. I want you to see I can't see the guide. I want you to be able to see that. That's important. Be able to see that guide. Now, let's take a look at what I got. Now, I should have this kind of mullet kind of thing going on. Look how that's moving forward. Now, some of you are going, oh, I don't like it anymore. Hey, it's just a matter of taste. Your taste is a journey in this industry. Just take a deep breath. It's okay. It's what she wanted, okay? Now, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to come back in. I'm going to eliminate that softness, and I want to stay pretty geometric with this particular piece right here. And I'm going to bring that right to just about the lobe of her ear. So now I'm going to keep this and watch all come in. And now I'm not going to scan. Now I want drama right there. That's that drama piece right there that I'm looking for right there. So now you can just start to see how I was talking to you about a bi level. But what I want you to know is first, it's much more pleasing to my eye to layer this first, then come, then come in and cut the length off versus cut the length your eyes are going to see so much bulk and weight there. You're going to come in vertical, take it all out. You're going to layer texture. Just go in, layer, come down. And now look how soft that sits. Look at that. See how it's sitting? I haven't even dried it. See how round that, that sits? Very softly. Simple, my friend. Simple. Okay. Uh, Risto Manor. I'm uh, sorry if I pronounced that. Impro One quick. When you make this style next time when it's time to cut the hair, how do you find the hair? How you can make the same hairstyle? Risto, I'm going to be really honest, my friend. I can never give someone the exact same haircut. I can never give someone the exact same haircut. So how do you go in and re recut this? First question I would be asking is ask the client, tell me what you disliked about the haircut. I want to hear what they disliked. I do not ask, tell me what you liked about the haircut. So how'd you like your haircut? You are insinuating they like the haircut. So my suggestion would be ask, what tell me? What did you dislike about the haircut? They're going to say, well, Sam, I loved it. Well, I want to find out if there's anything you dislike so I can readjust the haircut. Well, I didn't like the fact that it was disconnected. Well, then I know, okay, I'll blend it in a little bit more. But here's what's so great about this. Watch when I comb this up. What's going to happen is this top will separate from this. Disconnected haircuts, Haristo, are much easier to recut than a haircut that's been textured. Okay. When I play te cut texture, let's say I build texture, I do this, okay? This is the texture, this is the length. So this is their first visit. This is how they walk in. The next visit, I just point, lift everything, and I point cut. So I take that shorter, so I build the weight back into it. Then the next time they come, I retexture. The next time, I point cut the entire silhouette. The next time, I retexture. So you see how that's giving me more control of texture. You'll see when I go in, because this is disconnected from that, 
we still watch this. When I comb this up, all this is going to drop out because it's not blended in this. And you'll see that when I get there. I hope that makes sense, my friend. Remind me, Kurt, to show him that. All right. Yeah, uh, the same hairstyle, not, but I can give almost the same silhouette, but not the exact same hairstyle. Okay. Uh, it's just difficult to, uh, let me ask you this, Aristo. If you text your hair, how are you going to recut these little pieces here? See these little pieces? That's the texture you created. Okay, I'm going to move over here so you can see. Okay. See that? There's the texture. You use a texture blade. Okay. Now you got that. So how are you going to recut this right here, these little hairs, and give them the same haircut? You're just not. So I hope you're, that's making sense. I just need you to get that, my friend. But you can give them the same silhouette. Very close to the same silhouette. Okay. Let's go on to, to the fringe now. In this fringe. Okay, what I want to do is I want to dry this and I want to dry this, but I'm going to dry it after I layer it. <laughs> Before I was always talking about make sure you cut your fringes dry, but watch how I'm going to layer this fringe. Very, very interesting. So now I'm going because I'm cutting a fringe, I'm now dropping down to a shorter blade. And I'm going to work with a classic series now, an offset handle. So if you're not a, a fan of a forward set handle, then I would recommend that you invest in a classic handle. Same steel, same everything that we're working with, same Japanese steel. But here's what you need to understand. That thumb is back set. So there's a difference. But shorter blade in this story is important because you're working with a fringe. I believe in shorter blades. Now, before I layer this out, I go to the fringe. I take a very small piece. This is becoming classic technique and fringes for me, especially now to create all these kinds of fringes. Oops. Thank you, guys. I need to go to the other side over here. All right. Before I go any further. All right. Same guy. Take a slice. You see me stepping on this side. Let's give you a view of this side. Okay. I'll give you a profile view of it. Here comes my guide. There's my guide right there. I need to switch to the seven inch blade. Stay with what you've done. Why? It just makes it easier for me. This extends my hand away from that instead of my hand being so close to that line. Okay. There's the line. See, I can still see my guide. And now I match that. Okay. In this particular case, because I'm scanning, I'm cutting all the way back into that. Now I want you to notice I've overlapped my fingers. So I have nice, nice tension even into where I tend to be a little weak, which is right in here. Okay. So to take care of that tension pocket, I tend to overlap. See how I've overlapped my fingers. Now I have a clean tension from gap all the way towards that fingertip. Okay. Now I come back through. I'm bringing this down. I bring this down. I go back to my side. I bring it down. And now I come in and I'm cutting that blunt. Okay. All right. Excellent. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in. Get her straight to you. Okay, good. Now I'm going to cut my fringe. Okay. And then you'll see how I'm going to go. The fringe will disconnect from this area also. Okay, let's take a slice. Just a small piece. I was saying that with this fringe, it's become a classic technique for me cutting today's fringes, whether it be a curtain fringe, a shag fringe, or this new bottleneck fringe that we're seeing. Yes, bottleneck, Google bottleneck, that's the next fringe. It's a natural progression of a curtain fringe. Next time, maybe I'll do that for you. Okay, so there is my guide. I took a very small slice piece, not big because I don't want it too blunt. I notice I'm elevating down. I don't want it too heavy. Now there's the hairline. Now watch me take horizontal sections all the way back to this. So I'm over directing all the way back to this guide. Now here, instead of me compressing it, you're going to see me take section by section. And the reason because this is a fringe, I want to really stay in control with this. Once again, I'm combing this all the way back. I'll give you a view of this. Okay. Look where I'm combing to. Okay. All the way back there. So, so see how this is over directed back, over directed back. So I'm going to take everything in front of this section. I'm going to go back to my shorter shear. I'm going to take everything and in front of this section, I'm going to over direct to a stationary guide at the point of this triangle. Okay. 
Notice what I'm cutting nowadays. I'm letting things dry on their own. I find myself really letting things dry. Okay. All right. Now I come back. My hands are a little closer, but it doesn't bother me. I like the control of the line. The line is not so wide, so I'm comfortable with the size shear I have in my hand. Okay. Notice how I stabilize that blade on my finger. Okay. Staying stationary, everything coming back. So some of you type a yes in the in the chat box if you panicked on my guideline. Because remember, my guideline was to the hairline. Okay. Which I I would imagine when I show this in classes, in salon classes that I teach, a lot of people are panicking because they're like, Sam, that's so short. But what happens is the fact that you're utilizing the movement of over direction to a stationary guide, look how this, each section is getting longer. So I'm going to give you a front view okay, of my last section. Okay, Here comes a front view. Now watch at these two corners how much length I'm going to have. This is all the way back. All the way back to me. And yes, it's a lot of hair. Take your time. There's my guide. You can see my guide. Look how I palm the section. See me palm it? Okay, now I'm ready. Now I'm going to lay down, get my hand in there. So I lay the hair down. I move back. Look how I flow back. See, I move back. I keep floating back. Now I'm at that position. Now I can come in and scan. I work right to, right to left, okay, and then back the opposite way. And notice once again, that guide blade is on my fingertip. Now watch this for those of you that were panicking. Okay. Trust the process. That a girl, Shirley, you know what you are doing. So I don't fret. Thank you, Valencia. I appreciate that. All right. You know what you're doing. So I don't fret. Watch this. Watch this guys. Watch how long this is. You see how long that is. It's almost, almost like you give this a middle part. Can you see where you're at? How easy that was to create this. Look at that. You see how cool that is, guys, in there? I almost really like this. But remember what I'm going for. I'm going to go for a little bit more of a blunt fringe in that. God, I really like that. That's cool. Okay. You just got the darn thing. That away, Leilani. Yeah. You know what? Every time you pick up hair, you cut it. It's really amazing. I mean, just amazing. So remember now, I did not have to cut that little side, the little blunt piece right there. See that? So can you imagine had I not cut that, that would be longer. This would probably fit right into that. And you'd be right on your way to a nice, beautiful shag in terms of how this is working. Watch this. I just want to show you. Let me step over to this side. Okay. Watch this. I just like the way this is this, this happening. Do you see that? See how I've got that happening already? All right, but what I want is I want this to be blunt. So now this is where I pick up and I blow dry. Okay. So now I'm going to pick up my quick blowout. I'm going to give that a little shake. I'm going to come through and understand product is not an option. It's a necessity. Now, this is where I recommend, guys, that you actually pick up, the, take the client's phone, and this is where you actually come in and you um, videotape it. So their phone is on your station and you're videotaping you, blow drying it, talking to them, how, what product you're using, how you're blow drying, et cetera, what you're doing. Now, in this particular case, I would suggest using a comb. Let's say she has a calic, comb works great, plus you get a lot more stretch with a comb. So I'm going to stay quiet for about two minutes. Excuse the blow dryer, but I want you to just watch the action of the blow dryer. Hey, all while Sam does his blow drying here, I want to give you all a tease. Stick around to the end of the class. We have something special for you. And many of you have been following <laughs> Sam for many years, so I think you're going to enjoy this. See you in a bit.
Okay, now you can just see the action that I've gotten there and able to go in and stretch dry. But what I did was I used a comb and not a brush. Now I'm going to take a finishing brush, our nine row finishing brush. And watch how I'm just going to get a little more stretched. So I'm going to spend about 60 seconds doing this. Now, I blow dried that with a fine teeth of the comb, and that's great to use when you find that a client has a lot of calyx. It's excellent to use. All right. N number two, I went in with a nine row finishing brush, and that's because I wanted to get a little more polish and a little bit more smoothness out of it. And that's a great one to work with. Okay. The blow dryer I work with, this is our Artist Series Vision Dryer. Okay. It's all ions related and it's just awesome in regards to the way it works and i love the finish and the polish i'm getting with this dryer okay, this particular dryer all right let me back you up now and show you we did that now let me show you what i did on the sides now when we came to that side area we went in and we took the side area this is the over direction here on this back let me give it to you in black so you can take pictures of this so we divided that in the center remember that this back area Okay. Sammy, I'm going to suggest you bring your camera up a little bit. You're out of the frame yeah. as you're you. drawing. You bet, buddy. Thank you, Kurt. Can't do it without those guys. All right. Great. Thanks, Kurt. All right. Watch. This is how my hand was placed in my comb. And that's when I cut this back. See that? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you I elevated this right from where it's at. Right from where it's at. So this area here, watch this. I took a slice of what I had cut. That became my guide for all of this area, and I scanned it to that. That's what we did on the side area, okay? Now we're taking the fringe area. What we did in the fringe area was we took a small little slice right here. We brought that down to the hairline, and that's our guide. Please don't chicken out on this. Here's why. Because if you cut this too long, see how long that it gets to the hairline, you cut it way down here, then what you're doing basically is cutting almost one length hair. You'll see when I cut the fringe. Okay. Then what we did was we took horizontal sections across this, across this, and we brought every section back to that. So it looked like this. Okay. Horizontal. Every section was elevated. That guide came from there back to that, back to that, back to that. That's what we did. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut the fringe. So on the fringe, what we want to do is we want to cut all of this is going to be square. So I want to bring down this now, and I'm going to cut the length. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a small shear and a regular cutting comb so I can stabilize it. Okay, so let's bring her up. Then all I have to do is a crown, and we got it. And I know I've got enough time, eight minutes. My next client's here in eight minutes. Okay, so now all I do is I think about where I want to take this. So now, do I want to go in there and make it blend in with that? I'm going to start in the center. So what I'm going to do is get a middle part. I'll give it to you in a moment. Once I'm here, I just blouse it. So I'm going to cut this little rectangle section here first to the shape of the head. By that, I place my comb. Look at me feed this hair into the wide teeth of the comb. I'm going to bring that down to about bridge of the nose. And now I'm going to scan that. Yes, I'm even scanning my fringes. Here, I maintain the same angle across that fringe and bring it right across. Okay. All right. Now I go, look how I'm, what I'm trying to teach you here is I'm doing this in small rectangle sections from where the hair lives. I'm not just taking a section going all the way across. 
Now this is my next section. So I drop, I take up that guide and that comb, I drop that inside and I let the comb sit flat on the head. See, I'm moving it. I let it sit flat on the head. That's stabilized. I drop down. There's the guide. And I cut to that. I cut on the way out so I'm not cutting, closing on the way in and catching the comb. I like using the comb because the comb, it allows me not to have so much tension on that. Okay. Look at my fringe. Let's get it right there to you. Okay, looking good. Let's come to the side. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this square going. I'm not gonna blend it into this. Okay, so remember, I want this to have a bi-level effect to it. Okay, so now I'm gonna comb this down. I lift this up, I put it inside. I think about okay, there's the line. Look, see here's where that length's at. Look how I'm gonna come right across. I can always cut the corner underneath if I want to. But let's come across first. And see how that, that fringe, how it just drops right into that little side panel that I have there. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so I don't want that to necessarily blend in that. So when you look... Like this, it's almost got a bob effect to it or looking like it's going around. Then all of a sudden it drops off right there. Okay, That's what I want in this particular case. Now you could always knock that off and blend that in that way, but not this cat, not this time. Okay, here, white teeth. Look, I just lift that up, place it in, move it down inside, bump, come down to that, stay square and cut. And notice I'm cutting on the way out. Now have the client close their eyes. This way it takes them emotion out of the way, but most importantly, also, it doesn't get the hair in their eyes. See how I was able to get that so nice and round? Now all I have is the top. And the top is going to be very simple. Okay, you can see where I dropped that down. Now I'm going to come through. So I would suggest letting this back area, letting that dry naturally. Okay. But I like the idea of blow drying the French, or you could blow dry this whole thing straight if you wanted to. That's going to be a matter of choice and preference in regards to client. Now watch what I'm going to do. You cannot be afraid to do this. I'm going to take all of this at once. Okay. And watch how I'll get this area. So I get a little bit of drop over. On this area here, I'll get a little bit of drop. You see if you like it, what overlaps it. If you do, you keep it. If you don't, you take it off. Okay. So now we simply lift from where we left off. I'm going to use this as a visual guide. I reached out, pay attention. There it is. See that? But I'm going to extend over that. See, I just dropped that guide. It just fell out. Everything is combed to the center. Wide tooth combed to the center. Wide tooth combed to the center. Okay, here comes that piece as my guide, as a visual guide. I'm not going to blend into that piece. See, you can see it right there. I'm going to use that as a guide. I want to go about an inch to two inches above that. So I'm here. I am cutting to the shape of the head. Right there is where I want to be. And now I come through. I'm taking my seven inch dry and I come in, take the length off first. Okay, now come back in with your 14 tooth point cutting tool shear. Okay, and now I come through and watch what I'll do. I'll just lay it down and I one, two, three, one, two, three, comb. Now slice. Now watch what I do horizontal. Okay, one, two, three, take another slice. Okay, so what I did was I threw length because I brought everything to the center. One, two, three. Because I brought everything to the center, I've got more length out towards the perimeter edge. Two, three. Watch when I release this now and start watching the shape. You seen that shape? Let me give you there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Argentina, Jose. Como tal? It's very exciting to me to see a nice chunk of hair get cut off and fall. Yes, surely. You know, I was not taught to do that. You know, I was told don't do that, Sam, but that was then. This is now. See, it's a matter of what's working for me right now. It's a matter of, you know, discovering, well, here's what I want you to do, guys. I want you to start to discover different ways in which you do things. Just start thinking about that. See, I kind of like that. 
So you have a creator choice. Watch what I mean. Watch. When this falls, see how this is falling kind of tenderly over it? I kind of like it. I wouldn't take it off. But then again, it depends on the personality of the client. So once again, guys, this top area, all I did here was pinch this all the center like this. And when you cut this, you cut this to the round of the head. And that is longer than that. Sam, I'm going to recommend you bring it down again. Yep. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Kurt. Thank you, buddy. Gosh, thank you, Kurt. All right. So here's what I did on top. Okay. Everything came to the center. The angle I cut was to the shape of the head. Okay. Notch it off the length, then come in with your 14 twos. I left this a little bit longer. Okay. Now I could come in with the invisible in now and I could go in and I could even soften this out anymore. But I kind of like where it's at. I don't see myself really doing anything to it. All right. So if you learned something today, let me just get her. If you learned something today, just give me a yes. Let me move this out of the way, Kurt. And that way they can get a picture of that flip chart. But if you learned something today, just give me a yes. Ah, Facebook user. Oh, you love it. Yeah. I, I got to tell you, I'm happy with this in regards to, well, Sam, didn't you know what you were going to get? Well, I did something a little bit differently. And that's in that fringe area com compared to what I did with the actual Christie haircut. Uh, do me a favor, my friends. Make sure you're following us on uh, IG, on Instagram, Sam Via Hair. Uh, please check it out. Make sure you go to YouTube and you subscribe on YouTube. Kurt, I know you got a surprise for them. I want them to watch this. Happy anniversary, brother. I love you. Yep. Let it go.